You know, I, <clears throat> I love that song, He'll Make a Way, where there seems to be no way. It's amazing how God works in our lives, amen? Uh, matter of fact, uh, yesterday, God, uh, it, it, it was a blessing. It could have been a mess, but Carol and, and the girls uh, had went shopping, and I'd worked in the office, and I was getting ready to head outside to work on leaves and spend the rest of the day out there. And I went by the closet, and I, and I thought, boy, I hear a sound. And I got to check, and, and the hot water heater had blowed a hole in the bottom. And, of course, we got laminate flooring uh, uh, almost all, ha over half of our house. And I... Thought, boy, I better start checking, and, and I got to check, and I realized the hot water heater, and got the water shut off, and uh, uh, praise God, God makes a way where there seems to be no way, yet contained that water, and it didn't get into any of the uh, lam uh, laminate flooring or anything, and and uh, and God opened the door, uh, 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 David Jones, the plumber, uh, I, I got a hold of him, and he come over, and and. Uh, we got it all done and replaced and cleaned up last night. And, and I just praise God because it could have been a real mess. Uh, but God took care of us and, and, uh, uh, and praise God that I, I got a hold of David and he dropped everything he was doing and headed over our way and, and we got the hot water heater changed out. Anybody else? Uh, God's made a way where there seems to be no way, something special. Anybody else have a... Oh, uh, Carolyn. Amen. He will make a way, won't he? I bet. Amen, amen, amen. God makes a way, doesn't he? Yeah, praise God. Anybody else want it? God made a way where there seems to be no way? Amen, he did. I, I, I watched you smile over there, and I thought, yeah, she needs to say that. Amen, amen. Praise God. God is so good, guys. You know, I, I always share, I, uh, uh, when through the years of being in the ministry and you get calls from people that's had devastating news and, and you weep with them, you cry, you pray with them, but I always say when I got the call from the doctor and he said, as we verified it, you've got prostate cancer. Uh, it really set me back. And, but, uh, what was it, two months ago, we're, uh, we're five years, Carolyn. Uh, so, yeah, amen. And, uh, and the last checkup a couple months ago, everything was free. Steve sat over here. How many years, Steve? Thirteen, Thirteen years. It, uh, I remember those years back when you shared that with us, that uh, they discovered prostate prostate cancer so in God good guys amen he's so good to us he works in so many ways in some ways in mysterious ways that he puts all the pieces together well this uh, receive our tithes and offerings Charlie and Steve if you'll come <clears throat> while they're coming uh, in the decoration of the trees and stuff it looks pretty good amen the ladies have done a great job. And, and this here, uh, the nativity scene and things, that's, uh, uh, Anne has got that on display here. And did you, is part of your family may have made that, Anne? Your grandfather made that. So I think that's really neat too. Uh, amen. Well, let's join together in prayer. And, and Charlie, would you lead us, please?
same today, tomorrow, and yesterday, and regardless how big the problem is, he's got the solution. Yes. And Lord, we just thank you for your word for today. And Lord, we just ask that as we collect this offering, that you bless the gift and the giver. And Lord, you give us wisdom to use the money wisely for this church and the life out in the community. We just ask it in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Charlie. This morning, I want to share about the Christmas season and all centered around, and I don't know where you can see, the, the Advent wreath and candles. And, uh, uh, you know, here we are entering into the Christmas season. It's a busy time of the year and a lot of demands, and, and uh, I got tickled, uh, 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 Carolyn and Emma and, and Kim yesterday, they were uh, headed all over the countryside trying to find the right gift and, and get all the right presents. And, of course, in the middle of that, the hot water heater decided to, to blow up. And uh, uh, it was kind of a rush-rush a uh, 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 Saturday uh, all day. But here we are. At, at, we have four weeks of Advent. And, you know, the, the word Advent itself means uh, arrival. And, uh, you know, uh, everything about Christmas centers around the theme of Christ. And aren't you glad that God loved you so much that he gave us the gift of a Savior and sent his Son to come into this world, that he would be God with us? But as we talk about this Advent, I want you to think about Advent. It should be a a season of expectation. How many agree with that? uh, If you go back to the time of the birth announcement, it was expectation. Can you imagine how Mary must have felt when that angel appeared to her and said, you're going to conceive and have a child. He's going to be the son of God. And the expectation that began to stir within her. But not only that, how about anticipation of thinking, wow, the arrival of the Son of God. I'm going to be uh, the mother that bears uh, uh, the Son of God. And yet the preparation is important, and yet the longing and looking for that special moment when she would bring forth that child. But as we go through Advent season, and we talk about it, and we're going to talk about the colors of the candles a little bit, I pray that it will be expectation in you, that, that it will be a time that you can experience more of God in your life. You know, to me, when I think about Christmas, it's one time the whole world focuses on something about God. Now, it, it gets that way out of proportion, and it amazes me that, you know, you go in the stores, and before Halloween had come, we was already seeing Christmas decorations and advertisements and all of that. But, uh, you know, it should be an expectation that, that we can share the message of Christ. And that message of Christ, the theme that I'm going to be using as we go through uh, the month of December is joy to the world. You know, shouldn't it have an expectation uh, that it should bring joy to the world? that it should bring uh, joy and, and happiness to our lives as we uh, experience and make uh, preparation uh, for the Christmas season. You know, when you think about the Advent wreath, I'm going to move my pulpit over here just a little bit, and you have the colors of this an, uh, Advent wreath. You have three purple, a pink, and a white candle. And all of these basically have meaning Uh, As we go through and talk about this, and as we progress in this message, we're going to light one of 
the purple candles. But you see, the first candle is the purple candle, and it's the candle of prophecy or the candle of hope. And when you think about prophecy, can you imagine the message that was declared and how Mary handled that message and how it had to bring hope into her life? But can you imagine if you was Joseph and how he had to deal with this prophecy and how he had to make preparation in his life to be able to deal uh, with the message? But you see, the Bible says in Isaiah, it says, the root of Jesse will spring up, one who will rise to a rule over the nations. The Gentiles will find hope in him. Aren't you glad we found hope in Christ? Can you realize this message is not just a message to the Jews. This is a message of a Savior to the world, joy to the world. A Savior has come. God in flesh has dwelled among us and to bring not just joy of a birth of a baby, but to bring the joy of salvation and the hope that we have of eternal life. Aren't you glad you have that blessed hope? You know, as I was going through this message, I thought, you know, times can be difficult. Times can be frustrating. Life can be frustrating. And when you have tragedy and when you have all kinds of problems, but you know what? We have this message of hope, this prophecy that was fulfilled 2,000 years ago. And yet, guess what? Our hope is he's coming again. Aren't you glad he's promised he's coming again? Shouldn't we have expectation about that? Shouldn't we have anticipation about it? Shouldn't we, as what the Scripture says, all creation cry out for this blessed hope? All creation is crying out for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't you feel like we're coming to the home stretch? Don't you feel like we're marching down closer and closer to the return of Christ? But you see, that should be the blessed hope in us. And listen to what, this is my, my favorite passage of Scripture when it talks about hope. It's Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 19. And it declares that this hope that we have is an anchor to our soul. And the, it's an anchor because the Scripture says it is sure and steadfast. In other words, he is faithful. How many believe he's faithful? And we can depend upon this blessed hope, this promise that he was coming, that he came forth, born in a manger. But guess what? He's coming again. He's coming again, and all of those who long and look for his return will meet him in the air. Isn't that a glorious thought? And yet, it says this hope becomes an anchor. It becomes something sure and steadfast. No matter how difficult life can be, if you have that blessed hope, guess what? There's something better on the horizon. There's something better waiting for us. Can you imagine, and think about this, all the years back when the Israelites were in slavery, they cried out to God. God heard their prayer, delivered them out of there, and promised them a promised land. It took them a while to get there, but he was faithful, and that hope was true in, in their lives. Here we are, all these thousands of years later, and guess what? We have a blessed hope a living Savior that is coming again. And you know what? How many believe heaven is a better place? How many really believe heaven is a better place? How many realize that that is our destiny? That is, where, that is the hope that we have. Life can be difficult. Life can have problems. But I want you to understand, we win, guys. If you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, that should be a living hope within you. All right? Now, the second candle is the candle uh, called the Bethlehem candle or uh, the candle of preparation or the candle of faith. And I want you to think about this candle of faith. How would you like to have been in Mary's shoes? You know, how would you like to have been in Mary and Joseph's shoes? And can you imagine, I wonder if you ever thought that the setting of that thing, but they traveled 80-some miles to get to Bethlehem. Can you imagine traveling 80-some miles, pregnant, ready to have a child riding on a donkey? That'd be quite a challenge, wouldn't it? 
And yet, when I think about this second candle, that it would be a candle of faith. How many realize it took faith to believe in the promise that God spoke to Mary and Joseph? It had to take faith to say, we can make this journey. But how about you and I? Do we have to have faith? We have to have faith that what he's promised will be true within our lives. We have to have faith to believe that as we continue our journey of life, that God is always with us. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. And we can boldly say the Lord is our helper. But you see, you have to have confidence. You have to have faith. You have to trust that God will always be there with you. So as we go through Advent, next Sunday we'll light the candle uh, of faith. And, you know, I may realize it takes preparation. It takes daily preparation to be able to continue this journey of faith. You know, one of the things that I uh, always try to do uh, every day, and it's amazing sometimes how that something can uh, interrupt your schedule. But one of the interesting things in preparation and, and that helps build my faith is having a quiet time every morning with God. And having a quiet time of reading devotions and, and allowing uh, God to speak to me through his word. And, you know, uh, the scripture says, be still and know that I am what? God. How many realize that if we go through the Christmas season, guys, it's a busy time of the year. We create more pressures than we can imagine. I, uh, uh, I suggested one year to our family, I said, just don't give gifts. Ooh, that went over like a lead balloon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I said, maybe we ought to just give a gift to somebody. And, uh, but, you know, we get so busy th searching for the right gift, and we get so busy saying we've got to meet all these expectations, but the journey of faith says I need to make preparation to stay in touch and communion with God. Amen? Now, the third Advent candle, we changed a color to pink. And uh, the third candle is the candle of joy. And listen to this, this scripture, and, and this is in Luke, the second chapter, verses 7 through 15. And it says, She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe, baby wrapped in cloth, lying in a manger, and suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Can you imagine the, the message of joy? The message of joy that was overflowing in the shepherds' lives and the anticipation and expectation that began to stir within them. But how many realize? And once you think about this, guys, shouldn't we demonstrate the joy of the Lord today? Shouldn't people see the joy of God in us that we rejoice because we have this hope? We rejoice because we have a faith in a living Savior who is faithful in his promises. And as we go through the Christmas season, what a time to show forth the joy of the Lord. What a time to, as we demonstrate in our communities, as we demonstrate on our jobs, as we demonstrate in our neighborhoods, as we demonstrate while we're shopping, the joy of the Lord should be resounding over and over in our lives. You sh shouldn't that be the anticipation in our lives? That we are anticipating and we are rejoicing because of the message of Christ. Now, the fourth candle, and that's the angel candle or the candle of love. And if you think of one scripture 
that everybody has known from childhood that demonstrates and speaks about the love of, uh, uh, of God. What scripture would that be? Huh? John 3.16? What does John 3.16 say? When did you learn that, Charlie? Childhood? Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> More years than you like to think back, right? Yeah, there you go. And can you imagine? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So the pink candle represents the candle of love that we reflect on the love of God with in our life. And then, I'll speed up, the white candle. And that is the candle of peace. And how many of you remember a name that Jesus was called? You have Prince of Peace. And you know why he's the Prince of Peace? Because not only did he come as a babe, born in a manger, but he went all the way to the cross of Calvary. And when he died on that cross of Calvary, he paid the penalty for the sins of all mankind. And in that, when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we have peace. How many of you read? He gives peace that passes all understanding. So as we go through Advent and we do the, 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 the candles, I want you to reflect back and think about the different meanings of this Advent candle. And most of all, I want you to realize that it should bring peace within our lives. You know, I, le- I read this story, and I thought it was pretty cool, the story that I read. I love reading different stories and sometimes the, the humor out of it, but it said in a six-year-old Sunday school class, the teacher decided that she would allow the children to put together their story of the birth of Christ. And out of their what they've learned uh, at, at a young age of six and what they've heard taught, she said, here's the deal. You guys put it together, and we'll present it to the church. The six-year-olds were excited, and so they ended up having three Marys and two Josephs. <laughs> and uh, they had six shepherds and two wise guys. <laughs> and one boy decided it would be interesting to be the cow. So he wanted to play the cow. Well, they was all working on this, and one little boy raised his hand, and he said, I want to be the doctor that delivers the baby. <laughs> So the teacher said, okay, it's your, your program. You can be the doctor. So the little boy, he was excited. He was at the doctor, and he run to the manger scene they had, and he was in there just working away, and here he come out from the manger in all excitement, and he, he, as he come out of there, he said, congratulations, Marys. It's a god. <laughs> I thought that was the coolest story this year. Congratulations, it's a God. But, you know, uh, it brings joy to your heart. But, you know, there's a hymn that has become probably one of the most well-known hymns, and it's called Joy to the World. And uh, I want you to listen to the words to Joy to the World. It says, Joy to the World, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. Heaven and nature sing, heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns, okay? Let men their songs employ while fields and floods and rocks and hills and plains repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sin and sorrow grow. Nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow. For the curse is found. For the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace. He makes nature prove, or nations prove, the glory of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love. You know who was the author of Joy to the World? Isaac Watts. And do you know that it's an interesting thing about joy to the world and the theme that I want to use as we go through the month of December? This song was not written about Christmas. The song had nothing to do with Christmas. 
The song was never intended to be a Christmas carol. The song was written off of Psalms 98, and the song was designed off of 90, Psalms 98, not a child coming, but a Jesus coming back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Coming back one day to rule over the nations, to rule over the world. Coming back one day to defeat the curse that was placed upon the world. And as I shared with you in the beginning, even God's creation cries out anticipation for his return. And so when Isaac Watts sat down and penned this song, he was talking about the return of Jesus Christ coming to earth to rule and reign as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Somewhere down through time, years and years after Isaac Watts wrote this, it was developed into the Christmas song. But it says nothing about a baby Jesus. It talks about the king who comes to reign, the king who defeats the curse, the king who rules over the nations, and they share the wonders of his love. Isn't that a pretty powerful thought? And yet, you see, as we go through Christmas, and as we think about it, Advent means his arrival, his coming. And we celebrate 2,000 years ago. But let me tell you what, you know where our anticipation ought to be? You know where our expectation ought to be in all of these years later that he's coming again, guys? Our expectation should be that he is coming to be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is coming to defeat the enemy and destroy death. He is coming to set up his kingdom and rule with his people. Isn't that good news? That's the anticipation. That's the expectation that we should have. And you know, I love Psalms 150. I want you to listen to the words of Psalms 150. It says, praise the Lord. Praise him in his mighty firmness. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the trumpet sound. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipes. Praise him with clinging cymbals and praise him with flashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. How many of you realize we are in a season that the world recognizes a baby Jesus being born. They may not understand the depths of that, but the whole world focuses on giving gifts and sharing a little bit of love and caring for one another. But as Christians, guys, we should have the joy of the Lord within our hearts. We should go about with praise upon our lips. We should go about rejoicing in the Lord. And we should be so happy and so excited that people see Jesus shining in our lives. Amen? But yet, we've allowed the fears and all of these different things to quench that flow of joy in our lives. You know what? I believe that as we go through life, wherever we are at, we ought to rejoice in the Lord, and it should be on our lips that we want to tell of the glory of God within our lives. Amen? And I believe that that should be the theme as we go through this Christmas season. You know, yes, praise God, it is a God. He is our God. He is our Savior. He is Jesus, the soon-coming King. And we need to be rejoicing in that. We need to have joy unspeakable and full of glory within our lives. Now, when you read Matthew, the third chapter, you read about a character named John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the forerunner of Christ. John the Baptist was declared that he would be the messenger that would declare, prepare ye the way for the Lord. And he came on the scene, and his message was declaring that they needed to repent, and they needed to bring forth fruit worthy of their repentance. I got to thinking about that as I was preparing these messages for this season. You know, John the Baptist, his message was prepare the way, repent, change your life, make ready for the return of the Lord. Now, here we are all these years later. The message should be repent, prepare for the coming of the Lord, show forth fruit. 
that shows your life has been transformed by the King of Kings. You know, uh, I thought about that. There's a lot of bells and whistles right now. <laughs> Uh, you know, you go in the stores and they're, they're, they're playing all, you know, all of this Christmas stuff. All of us centered around the economy. All of us centered around spending money. All of us centered around getting the right gift. But when John the Baptist came, he declared a message. He sounded an alarm. He sounded the whistle. He exposed the sin of the time. And he said, repent and prepare for the coming of the Lord. For his arrival is at hand. And guess what? It happened. Jesus came onto the scene. But you see, here's my three words that I want you to keep through this Christmas. See, he caused the people to stop and think a little bit. I want you to stop, and I want you to think about what this season is about. I want you to stop and think about it's the greatest gift that has ever been given. I want you to stop and realize it's God's love being demonstrated in its fullness. I want you to stop and think not only is it about a baby born in a manger, it is about a Savior who died on a cross. I want you to stop and think it's not only a Savior who died on the cross, but God raised him from the dead, and all these 2,000 years later, he lives, and he's alive. And I want you to stop and think that he says, Behold, I stand at the door. I'm waiting for the word for the Father, and I'm coming again. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. The second word, I want you to listen. You see, John's message caused them to stop. But also, John's message caused them to listen. And they begin to come out and say, what should we do? And he says, repent and prepare the way for the Lord. You need to listen. You need to have an ear to hear what God may be trying to say to each one of us through this season. And I allow God to speak to our heart. You know, if you're driving in a car, and you hear the sound of a train, and you see lights flashing, that gets your attention, doesn't it? And you listen, and you start looking. And you're going to heed the warning. Well, you see, I want you to slow down this Christmas season, and I want you to listen to hear what God may be saying to us as we go through this Christmas season of 2017. I want you to listen to what God may be speaking to your heart. And I got the other word is look. Stop, look, and listen, or stop, listen, and look. Look around you. Look at the people that you rub shoulders with, that you're in contact with. You know, the older I get, it seems like, and I've never been a patient person, but I get more impatient the older I get. <laughs> it's just, you know, have you ever got irritated? Uh, yeah, you, you've all got irritated. We've all been guilty. And, and, you know, yesterday I told Carolyn, and I, matter of fact, I apologized to Carolyn this morning because they were out shopping and the hot water heater, the bottom went out of it. Water was, I thought, going everywhere. And uh, I uh, was trying to figure out what to do and, uh, and all that. And I got impatient and I got anxiety. I started building up. Yeah. And uh, uh, then when I... We found a hot water heater. I took off and headed for Marion as hard as I could go. And I got down there, and the place I went to was as busy as all get out. And the right hand had no clue what the left hand was doing. And in the middle, they, had, they didn't meet anywhere. And, and I, I, I thought, wow, I went back there, and they had one hot water heater left. 
And I watched this guy come with a fork truck and pick that thing up, and I was trying to flag him down to see if it was mine, and he just tucked right on off. <laughs> and my impatience began to multiply, and my anxiety level began to increase. And I finally found the guy that was waiting on me, and I said, I, I, they just tucked that hot water heater. He said, they could enough. I said, I just watched them, man. <laughs> they, they're, they, they tuck it off, and I don't know where it went. He said, oh, I don't know. <laughs> no, then my anxiety level went out the top. You know, and, and all of a sudden, God spoke to my heart and said, son, I, I'll take care of this. Just back off. Don't make a fool of yourself. <laughs> don't say something that you'll be sorry that you, you, you said. Okay. And uh, God took care of it. We found another one way back hidden that they didn't know was up there. And uh, so right in the middle of that and call, and we was good. it wasn't work on the bullet. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, you know, we need to stop and look and look at our lives and, and allow God his peace to rule in our hearts. He says he gives peace that passes all understanding. And so this morning, I, when I got up and I was doing my quiet time, when I got woke Carolyn up, I asked her to forgive me because I was pretty nippity with her, saying, get home. <laughs> and she was very nice about it. No. <laughs> but isn't it amazing? Stop, listen, and look. This enjoy the season. This allow God to make this a blessed season that we experience the love and the peace, the kindness, the goodness of God. And you know, here's an interesting thing, my last point, and we're going to eat. If you go through the book of Luke, Luke has a theme of the joy of the Christmas message. And even when it comes down to the end of the chat book of Luke, listen to what it says in Luke 24, 52. When Jesus was returning and ascending up into heaven, the disciples, it says, and they worshipped him, and they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. They returned to Jerusalem with great joy. I mean, I realize, let's go through this season with the joy of the Lord. Let's go through this season rejoicing in all that God has done. Go through the season of letting the light of God shine through our lives. Does that make sense? And, you know, uh, this used the Advent wreath to be a message to us that there are certain things we need to do in our lives. And... Carolyn gave me the signal to light one, okay? Here we go. There we go. Candle of hope. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. Our hope is in him, all other ground. Become sinking sand. Amen. Let's stand together, guys. That's my introduction for our Advent season. As you stand with me, just close your eyes a moment. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to focus on the hope that we have in Christ. I want you to focus on the love that he loves us with. You know, the scripture says that you love him with all your heart, with all your soul. Everything about you should focus on his love. But you know, the challenge, he says, 
I want you to love people. I want you to love your neighbor as I have loved you. So I want you to focus on the hope. I want you to focus on the love, the faith that we have. And I want you to focus on the peace that he can only give in our lives. And allow him to softly and tenderly speak to you as you go through this Christmas season. Give him your anxieties. Give him your frustrations. He'll make a way where there seems to be no way. And allow him to do that as we go through the Christmas season. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your love. And thank you for the gift of eternal life through Christ Jesus. And Father, thank you that for the peace that we receive in knowing the truth, the hope that it creates within us, that we have a future, that we have a better place. Thank you that Jesus has been preparing our heavenly homes. And Father, as we stop a moment and we just listen a moment and we look around, help us see the things that are praiseworthy. Help us think on the things that are true and honest and thank, help us think on the hope that we have in Christ. Thank you for all that you do. Father, thank you that even as we gather here on this first Sunday in December that Father we can break bread together in our fellowship that we can enjoy one another as family of God and Father help us as we go through this season to enjoy our family and enjoy our friends and be able to be a light to all that we come in contact with thank you Father God Father I pray your blessings upon our fellowship meal pray, Father God, your blessings upon our, our fellowship. Thank you for our church family. Help us be a light to this community. We give you praise for you alone are worthy to receive it. And Father, we ask your guidance in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Hug somebody around you. Tell them you love them in Christ.